Welcome as we pray together the Collect for the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our prayer this week reads, O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. My first woe was this one. The minds of the faithful united in a single purpose. How does that happen? We ask God to cause, to bring to pass, to affect, to produce the minds of the faithful united in a single purpose. And the very first thing I thought of was this one, Champaign, Illinois, 1985, 80,000 people gathered for farm aid. But on a smaller scale, there's probably been a fundraiser in your community or your school or your parish. That group of people is all united for a single purpose. Imagine if that was the whole church. Wouldn't that be cool? But here we are amid the uncertainties of the world. Uncertainties in veritas in Latin mean difference or translated into changeableness or the fickleness, the uncertainties of the world. And we ask God that our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Gladness, joyfulness, rejoicing. Isn't the fickleness and the changeableness of the world kind of an odd place to look for gladness? And I bet you know someone who's always joyful, no matter what. Those people are a true gem. How do we get to be like them? We ask God to grant his people to love what you command and to desire what he promises. And why does it matter? Luke tells us in the gospel that we're going to strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. And Luke quotes Jesus there. Enter through the narrow gate, but you've got to be strong. We need to love what he commands, and we need to desire what he promises. Loving God's commands brought me to 1 John chapter 5. And 1 John reads, This is the love of God, keeping his commandments, nor are his commandments burdensome. Because every child of God overcomes the uncertainties. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. I want to go back to that chapter from 1 John, but first I want to explain to you where it comes from. The Bible is available mostly, you, we read the Bible, we read a translation. And this would be the King James, the NAB, um, and that is actually translated from like the Greek or the Hebrew. But there's another, that, another version that is called a paraphrase, and that is not an original translation. It's someone who read that and then wrote it in their own words. For example, this is Luke 13, 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say to you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. That is a translation. But this is from the Message Bible, and the, this is a paraphrase. And the same verse there reads, Whether few or many is none of your business. Put your mind on your life with God. The way to life to God is vigorous and requires your total attention. A lot of you are going to assume that you'll sit down to God's salvation banquet just because you've been hanging around the neighborhood all your lives. Obviously, that is not a translation and that is a paraphrase. Now that brings me back to 1 John. When I study scripture, I use a translation. There are a couple that I like more than others. Um, I have computer software where I have about six different versions that I like to compare. But sometimes when you're just kind of stuck, it's kind of nice to go to something completely different and get a fresh outlook. And that's when the Message Bible is kind of fun. This is this passage from 1 John in the Message Bible. Do we love God? Do we keep his commands? The proof that we love God comes when we keep his commandments, and they are not at all troublesome. Every God-begotten person conquers the world's uncertainties, the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. 
The person who wins out over the world's ways is simply the one who believes Jesus is the Son of God. And when I read that, I asked myself the question again, what would it be like for the faithful to be united for a single purpose? Think, purposefully united. And we would be bringing gladness in the uncertainties of the world. Will it be easy? No, but we'd be together. And Luke tells us we must be strong. And that strength will come from loving God's commands and desiring his promises. At my website, juliestore.com, I have a link to a priest's perspective of the Message Bible. And I would reiterate, it is not intended, I wouldn't recommend it for church services, um, and, nor would I use it for deep study. But sometimes if you just need to hear scripture in a new way, that might be what you need. And if you're struggling with a verse, I have a link to the Bible Gateway, which has many translations of scripture, and you can look it up and see how it actually compares with other translations. Let's close in prayer. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.